Major funding for Backyard Safari is provided by the National Science Foundation, America's investment in the future. What could this possibly be? It looks like dried lumps of mud, but believe it or not, this is really an animal's nest. It's home. So, who builds a nest of mud like this to live in? A bird. A bird called a barn swallow. Hmm? Now, take a look at this. It looks like a big ball of grass and leaves and twigs, doesn't it? But it's actually another kind of a nest. And the animal that used to live in it? A squirrel. Now this is one of the coolest homes you'll ever see. It's actually made of something that looks and feels just like paper. And who makes a nest like this? Wasps. Hundreds of them used to live in here. Want to take a look inside? Look at all those tunnels, all part of the wasp's home. When it comes to making homes, some animals are incredible builders. They make or find all the materials they need. And they always create homes that are just right for them. You want to know more? Well, what are you waiting for? Backyard Safari! Now's the perfect time. Come on in. The water's fine. Backyard Safari! Look too hard. It's right here in your own backyard. Backyard Safari. Backyard Safari. Backyard Safari. <laughs> there are lots of animals in our world, and they have lots of different kinds of homes. Celia. <laughs> what are you doing? Well, I'm doing an experiment on animal housing. Now, will the animals in our park choose to live in this house, fully equipped with your uh, tub, toilet, and refrigerator? Or will they choose to build their own homes using leaves and mud and twigs like they always do? Oh, well, I'd say that a house with all this stuff would be really, really great for a doll, or maybe a really teeny tiny person. But I think animals build their own homes from the things that are around them. Take squirrels, for instance. 
Squirrels are the animal kingdom's champion home builders. Champion eaters, you mean? <laughs> no, the squirrel's not eating. It's combining chewed grass, leaves, and twigs to build a nest. Huh. So what's this? Chipmunky see, chipmunky do? <laughs> Same technique. When the chipmunk's done, it will add the chewed up leaves to its nest. Huh. Of course, when we talk about champion home builders, we have to talk about these cliff swallows. Oh, why is that, Celia? Well, they collect mud in their beaks. Then, they take the mud back to build their nests on the sides of these cliffs. It's a muddy job, but somebody's got to do it, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and for a real champion home builder, this Swiftlet doesn't need twigs or leaves or mud. He makes his own building materials. Uh-huh. Wait a minute. Is that spit? <laughs> right. And when the spit dries, it hardens like glue. Pretty amazing, huh? Boy, I'll say. Now, where did that bird learn how to build a nest out of spit? How about drool school? <laughs> Celia? <laughs> okay, okay. I get the point. Animals build their homes from things that are around them, mm -hmm. like leaves and mud and, and even spit. Yeah. <laughs> but... I'll bet they can build even better homes if they had... Better tools! <laughs> <laughs> Animals already have all the tools they need to build their homes. In fact, some of their tools make me think of the ones people use. Take digging, for instance. When it comes to digging, crabs do their own bulldozing. If you've got enough arms and legs, you can put a whole wall up yourself. If you don't, you ask for help. Some birds use their beaks to make a hole. <laughs> Look familiar? Yep, when it comes to the tools of the home building trade, animals are fully equipped. And we do pretty well ourselves. to use equipment for everyone. Who is going to be the first animal to come out here and try one of these labor-saving tools? Don't be shy. OK, I get it. You want a demonstration? In the name of science, I will be happy to oblige. <clears throat> Oh, and remember, if you really want to have fun, it's important to make lots of noise when you use this stuff. Rum, 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 rum. Wait a minute. All this heavy equipment and no dump truck to put the dirt in. What was I thinking? I'll be right back. Crink has a really special home. Even if it does sometimes get a little overgrown. <laughs> I know you like it long, Sassafras, so you can hide in it. But if you let the sofa go, it'll take over the place. Celia, you're just in time to try out the freshly trimmed sofa. Hey, you cleaned up the whole place. You know, Crink, you have a wonderful home. I like it, but it takes a lot of work. And sometimes you'll see it takes a lot of practice. Here's the story of the weaver bird. This is a young male weaver bird. He's trying to build his first nest.
<laughs> Hang on, little guy. Oh my gosh. Will he get better at it, Crink? You bet. It's sort of like learning to tie your shoes. It takes some practice to build a good nest. Now watch this weaver bird. He's an expert nest builder. I'll say. Look at him tie that grass into knots. Actually, he's tying knots to build a nest and attract a mate. The nest has to be just perfect, or the female bird won't move in with him. What's he doing now? Signaling to the female to come check out his work. If she likes the nest, she moves in. See how she's checking it out? <laughs> That's it? Are you kidding? The nest is only half done. He's got to finish the bottom part. Then he makes a long entrance tube to keep out unfriendly neighbors. Well, that's a lot of weaving. Mm, they don't call them weaver birds for nothing. <laughs> it's a spectacular home. And speaking of great homes, do you want to know more? I always want to know more. Well, then just step out there. See you later. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> A beaver. Now, I've heard these guys can really build strong and safe homes. You know, they even chop down trees to do it. But he seems kind of small. I wonder how he does that. He uses his teeth and his paws. Hi, Hope. Hi. This is Hope Ryden. She's a naturalist who studies beavers, and she knows all about how beavers live. Why, why is this beaver living by himself? Why isn't he with his family? Oh. This beaver is named Baby, and he was found as an orphan. His mother had been killed by a motorboat on a lake, and the people who found him brought him here to Bear Mountain State Park in New York, and they raised him on a bottle. You know, this particular beaver looks like he gets quite a bit to eat. Yes, he's a little bit fat, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he needs to be fat because it's cold living in the water all the time. Right. So, oh, I guess so it's the fat is like a protective uh, yeah, covering like for him, right? suit, a little huh. fat suit. He looks kind of shiny, too. Why is that? Well, beavers have a, a gland in their body that produces a certain oil that waterproofs them so that the water never gets really all the way down to their skin. Oh. They what? use their little hands, you know, to spread that oil all over themselves. Really? Yes. So you said he uses his teeth? How does he do that? He has very sharp teeth. Here, you can feed him this. Wow. You mean he eats trees? Well, he eats the bark of the trees. <laughs> wow. Look at the little teeth go. They're very sharp teeth. They use them to chop down trees. Chop down trees? Yes. And look, look at the, um, the way the little hands move. Well, they're actually called forepaws, but he uses them just like we use our hands. He uses them to build things, his dam and his lodge. Huh. You think we could go see where the beavers oh, yes, live? let's do. Oh, okay. So, the beavers live near this pond? The beavers actually made this pond. Now, you're telling me that a few tiny little beavers could actually build this whole huge pond? That's right, with their paws and their teeth. Wow, so you mean they like scooped out a big hole and then filled it up with water? No, they didn't do it that way. They built a dam. When beavers decide to settle in a place, they gather up a lot of wood and they scoop up mud and then they use this lumber and this mud to block up the stream. They build a dam. So, where's the dam here? You're looking at it. Oh, yeah, right here in front of me. Ha! There, there are the leaves, there, there's the mud, the, the branches. It's all right there. How, how long has this dam been here? This is a very old dam. And this dam has been here probably since your grandmother was a little girl. Ooh! And 
until the beavers came to live here, this was all a meadow with a stream flowing through it. So this was just a little stream? Just a little stream. You know, I don't see anything that looks like a place beavers would actually live. Well, beavers like to be safe, so they've made their home on the opposite side of the pond. Oh! Would you like to see it? Yeah! We'll have to go by canoe. Great! I bet we couldn't canoe like this one when, when this was just a little stream, right? You sure couldn't. It took a lot of years for the beavers to make this big pond. Hey, I think I see it. Is that it? That's it. That's the beaver lodge. That's huh. where the beavers live. I don't really see an opening. How do they get in? Oh, well, they get in under the water. So beavers are really good underwater swimmers. Do you know a beaver can hold its breath for almost half an hour? Hmm. It's amazing. Well, what's on the inside? Inside, they chew out a little room for themselves to live in. What's a beaver family made up of? The mother, the father, and their babies, called kits. And the kits stay home for two years, and then they go off and they make their own lodge. So, are the beavers afraid of us? Is that why we don't see any of them around? Probably. But beavers are nocturnal. They sleep during the day and they come out at night. Oh, so you mean they're probably sleeping in this lodge right now? Probably. I guess we shouldn't disturb them. No. Thanks, Hope. Thanks for showing me all, all about the beavers and, and the homes that they built. Oh, you're so welcome. I hope you enjoyed it. I did. I loved it. Look here, walking stick. A bird nest with eggs inside getting ready to hatch. Oh, and I'd better get ready to go to the workshop. Got some important people to talk to. <laughs> I'll grab my grass jam and... Bye-bye, uh, walking stick. Hmm, leaves? Grass? Oh, it's Alana. How are you? Fine, thank you. How are you doing? Pretty good. What are you making? Oh, a bird nest. Oh, hold it up to my camera so I can get a good look. Uh, sure is shaped like a bird's nest. Uh, how were you making it? Oh, I had a piece of wire that was straight. Uh huh. It wasn't like this, but it uh, was straight. Yeah. And I twined it around to make a circle oh. shaped like this. Yeah, uh huh. And. Then I put clay on it like this. Right. And I worked the whole base like this. And you, you just kept adding pieces of clay till you got that nest shape. Oh. Yeah, then what? I put leaves on it like this. Oh, with those leaves, it's really starting to look like some bird's nests I've seen. What's that going to look like when it's all finished, Alana? Oh, it's going to look like this. Oh, that sure is a beauty. Hold it down so I can get a good look inside. Oh, yeah, I see. This is the back. Oh, good work, Alana. Have you made other nests? Mm-hmm. I've, I've made one more. It's made out of moss. Now, that's a handsome nest. Show me how you got it to look like that. Ah, oh, I see. You shape it and pound it until it looks like a nest. Uh -huh. You sure know a lot about birds' nests. Why do you like them so much? I just like birds a lot. I think their feathers are nice, uh -huh. and I like their personality, at, at some of them, uh -huh. and how they react. And I just like birds a lot. I see. Uh, then do you know any bird calls? Yep. I can do a love bird. I'm not sure if it's a love bird, yeah. but this is my guess. Okay. Woo! <whistles> and this is a parrot. Rot, pulling a cracker. Rot, rot. <whistles> oh, those are doggone good bird calls, and some of the finest looking nests I've ever seen. Thanks for showing them to me, Alana. Bye, Crinkle Root. Bye bye. <laughs> Thank you.
This is the pond the beavers built. These are the plants that grow in the pond the beavers built. And these are the ducks that swim through the plants that grow in the pond the beavers built. And this is a... Uh... Oh, ah! This is the moose that eats the plants that grow in the pond the beavers built. And these are the fish that swim in the water under the moose. And all the ducks that swim through the plants that grow in the pond the beavers built. This is the whole neighborhood that came to be. The otter that moved into the pond to eat the fish that swim in the water, under the moose, and all the ducks that swim through the plants that grow in the pond the beavers built. Like that, huh? Look at that weaver bird, it's going a mile a minute, going to build himself a home. Look at all he's putting in it. Lots and lots and lots of grass and a whole lot of care. It's gonna be just right for a family to share. Oh, there's nothing quite like it. Oh, so comfy and warm. Some homes are spacious and some are quite small. But each animal loves his own home the best of all Cause it's home, home sweet home Now lots of different animals build some kind of nest A squirrel needs a place to call its home And take a rest When beavers build themselves a dam That creates a pond Where ducks and fish and beavers live and care on, Cause they feel it a home There's nothing quite like it Home So comfy and warm Some homes are spacious And some are quite small But each animal loves his own home The best of all Cause it's home Home sweet home Right now, as we speak, animals are building new homes with the tools that I gave them. Yes! Really? Well, but it looks like these uh, animals left some footprints. Hey, let's go see what kind of homes they're building. <laughs> what? <laughs> Gee, bud, it looks like your animals are the... Uh, two-legged kind. Yeah, and it looks like their home is the well, sandcastle yeah. kind. <laughs> Look, my experiment's a success. Well, how's that? Oh, because the kids are using my tools to build a better sandcastle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, you're right, you're right. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, you're coming, right? Uh, you, you go ahead, I'll, I'll catch up. Who said he wants to play with this? You know something? He looks right at home. Do you want to help birds make their nests? Well, you can, with just a few simple materials from around your own nest. <laughs> I mean home. Now, here's my friend Gabe to show you how. I found some stuff that will really help the birds around here make their nests. 
Can you believe that this is what birds use to make their nest? Grass and leaves. Twigs. Even little pieces of string. All of this stuff. Maybe if I leave this stuff right here, the birds will make their nest up in this tree. To make a bird nest building kit, you need twigs, string, and leaves. <laughs> Good luck, home building helpers. And remember, the best place to learn about nature is right outside your door. Because when you're outside, you're on your own backyard safari. Bye-bye! Safari is a production of Lancet Media Entertainment and is produced in association with the American Museum of Natural History. This episode of Backyard Safari is made possible by a major grant from the National Science Foundation, America's Investment in the Future.